Irrigation is a critical aspect of farming. And as the world's population grows, farmers are expected to grow more food with less. To achieve that goal, the pivot now plays a far more important role in water efficiency. As the founders of the irrigation industry over 65 years ago, Valley Irrigation is setting the pace to revolutionize the industry once again. By advancing the pivot with their new technology that can help your operation reduce inputs and increase efficiency. Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm Christina Loren. Valley Irrigation is the worldwide leader in precision irrigation, helping you get the exact amount of water exactly where it's required in your field. And joining us tonight on set is Valley Irrigation Vice President of Water Delivery and Business Development. Darren Siekman joins us. We also welcome Valley Irrigation Associate Product Manager of Machine Controls, Preston Parmbley. Thank you both for being here. Really excited to talk about this tonight. It's a very timely subject for our growers out there. Let's start with your background though. Darren, tell us a little bit about your history. Well, I grew up in central Nebraska and both grandpa's farm, but unfortunately it was a couple hours away. So my dad was a county extension agent, so we didn't have land of our own, but that meant I got to go work for the neighbors. And what that meant in central Nebraska is you got to pull a lot of ditches, learn how to set siphon tubes, and then lay a whole bunch of gated pipe. So that quickly made me decide I wanted to go to college at the University of Nebraska and get an Ag Econ degree. And I've spent most of my career in Ag Technology and now at Valley. Ag Econ, so you know about the value, how much a return on investment is for a farmer who's trying right now to do more with less input. So tonight, can't wait to tap into your expertise. Preston, tell us a little bit about your history. Yeah, so I uh, grew up in uh, eastern Nebraska, actually less than 10 miles away from where Valley is manufacturing facilities at. Um, I got an uh, introduction to ag a little bit later in life. Um, so I get really kind of got interested in it with some new technologies developing. So I went to school, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where I got my degree in mechanized systems management through the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. And through the university, I got to spend some time in tech and, you know, aerial imagery and really was, you know, kind of a natural fit with Valley and technology and where everything's going. So I've been with Valley for the last few years now and part of the product development and product management team. And so it's been really, really great being there and seeing this new technology come to life. Yeah, and you're putting your degree to work. So yeah, I'm <laughs> excited right. to talk right. about tonight's show. I mean, this is one of the topics <clears throat> that I was really excited about, irrigation, because water is the ultimate scarce resource. And finding a way to manage it better for our farmers out there and our ranchers is so important. Now, Darren, when you look back at the history of irrigation, it's actually astounding to realize that pivots are 65 years old, just about, and your founder of Valley Irrigation actually founded the industry. Tell us about Bob Doherty and the company he built that has helped so many farmers. Well, you know, it's an amazing company, Christina. So, you know, our tagline is conserving resources and improving life. And absolutely, Bob was all about that. So it's more amazing to me, though, is it actually took him about five or six years to make the pivot go all the way around in a circle. <laughs> so, you know, and that's something that we take for granted nowadays. And we have the, the phone will ring off the, you know, ring off the hook at our dealers if we have any um, hiccups during the season. But absolutely, that was something that Bob spent a passion was to actually, you know, make sure that that was a structure was rock solid. Because we'll talk a lot tonight about our technology, but absolutely, when you think about our structure, about our gearbox, it's unparalleled. And that's really the building block in which we're able to catapult from and now talk about hundreds of thousands of pivots that now change the face of the earth. Wow. And to be able to track that history 65 years back from where Bob started to where you are now, that is phenomenal because technology, precision agriculture have come so far. So that is what we're gonna talk about tonight. But I wanna remind you, you are such an important part of our show tonight. I'm gonna to give you the number 877-731-6733. Remember, if you call in for our, for our panel of experts here and you have a question, you could be the winner of a prize pack tonight. We are giving away six, a special giveaway for our RFD TV viewers, and one lucky winner will get a grand prize, a Yeti 
Ready Cooler. All you've got to do is call in with your question and you might be a winner. Any question about irrigation, 877-731-6733. We're going to open up our phone lines now. So let's go back to your amazing founder, Bob Doherty. He got the center pivot patent, then he created this path for mass production, which has helped so many farmers around the world utilize water more effectively. Darren, you cover a vast territory, though. How are you able to meet the needs of a farmer somewhere like Iowa, where rainfall is rather abundant, so you don't need as much irrigation, versus somewhere like Arizona, if you're growing cotton and you need a lot of water? You bet. Well, absolutely. That's where our dealers come into play. So we um, design that machine. So even though it's a mass produced machine, we take a look at each field and those dealers know how to engineer whether that pivot in Iowa maybe only runs 600 hours a year and that pivot in Arizona might run 6,000 hours a year. But it's really amazing, Christina, the evolution of technology. So again, even though those machines may look the same to the naked eye, we've optimized that through that dealer channel and through our product development that we'll talk about later. You know, farmers love the pivot. We hear about it all the time here at RFB TV, but it's not the only option that they have. Preston, how do other irrigation methods like flood or drip stack up to pivot technology? Yeah, sure, great question. And, you know, when we talk about all the forms of irrigation out there, we really have to kind of bring it back to the basics of putting the water at the right place at the right time. And no matter where you're at in the world or you know, in the United States, whether you're in Arizona or Iowa, Illinois, Ohio, where, you know, irrigation is kind of more supplemental as more of a crop insurance. But, you know, it's it really can be shown the uh, the benefits of irrigation no matter where you're at, because we can provide the water with provide the crop with water at the crucial growth stages um, with that plant. So, you know, really interesting statistic that we have is, uh, you know, talking about less than 20% of the world's harvested land is irrigated and it generates over 40% of our global food production. Wow. And so it really shows the power of being able to deliver that water to that plant when it really, really needs it. Uh, you know, and when we talk about, you know, back to your question on how pivot, center pivot irrigation stacks up against flood and drip, we really have to look at the individual inputs into those irrigation types. You know, of course, each one has water, you know, specifically for pivots, we do have to look at, you know, electricity or fuel and how to power that or pump that water to the pivot. But, you know, things like chemical fertilizer for chemigation and fertigation and, and especially labor. And, you know, fortunately, I don't have too much experience with flood. But, you know, Darren does. <laughs> I have friends back home that have a lot of experience with it. it it's there's a lot of labor a involved. Lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. You know, running down, opening up the gates, shutting the gates. I've been to California and see the the mountains of drip tape there stacked in the corner of the field and that they had to rip out and lay new stuff back in. And so, you know, we start to look at these inputs, you know, the pivot being the most effective and efficient way to deliver water to that field, you know, as well as being very efficient with power and fuel. It really starts to stand out when we stack it up against these other forms of irrigation. And you look at corn prices these days and farmers are just wondering why are not are pr corn prices staying where they are? Why aren't they coming up? When you talk about the input costs, the decisions that farmers are making right now, every single dollar counts and they want to maximize that return on investment. Let's talk irrigation basics at this point. A pivot, one of the most effective and lowest cost implements that you can actually put in the field and you get a pretty quick return on your investment. Let's talk about that. And when farmers have so many choices about where they can invest, why should they consider a pivot? Well, the main reason they need to consider a pivot is, it's, as Preston just man, uh, mentioned, it's really about crop insurance. You know, after four days and we get some of these, especially this summer, we had some drought. And even in a place like, you know, some of the I states, as we talk about, you're talking about seven to 15 bushels per day in some cases. So you can really get a quick return. And more importantly, what you talk about is the cost per acre. And so our friends at Kansas State University have done a study, and you can see that a pivot costs about $1,180 an acre on average versus drip that's closer back up to $1,800 an acre. But here's the real thing. When you put that pivot out there, you're putting it out there for a long time. And even after 15 years, our pivots are usually worth 50% of their residual value or their initial value. Wow. So we know, we understand that farmers are under amazing economic stress. Yeah. Balance sheets are being stressed right now. But we know that when you make the investment in a valley, 
then that's really what pays off in the long run. That's what I've heard. I mean, I've heard guys say that their equipment has lasted much longer than they even expected it to. Is that something that you're accustomed to hearing? That's something that we hear all of the time, absolutely. And again, that's, but that goes back to Bob. That goes back to what Valley um, is really founded on, is the fact that we want to deliver that kind of value for our growers, because we're there as a partner. You know, let's go ahead and put up the drought monitor. This is the latest drought monitor for the country. And you can recall last year we had to deal with replant 19. Well, just one year later, after we had that saturated ground, you take a look at states like Iowa, Illinois, we've got pockets of moderate severe drought even. And so for farmers living in the Midwest, when you rely on the weather, when you rely on mother nature, especially this late into the season, it can get a little dicey, but when you make the investment into irrigating, you got a little bit more control. And I've heard some farmers say that just by adding irrigation, 100 plus bushels per acre increase, is that is that unusual? I don't think that's unusual at all because again, it's what we talk about. Now you don't have to wait for the million dollar rain. Yes. Now you press the button on your phone or you make the trip to the field and you start that million dollar rain. Wow. <laughs> so you have even more control out over the yield that you're getting. It's, it's such a, a different game than farmers like when Mr. Doherty started the company. It must have been so different to see where right. it has come yeah. today. Unbelievable. You know, let's talk about that because different states, they have different issues with water scarcity, Darren. Let's talk about tightening supplies. Are you noticing that in states across the country that we're seeing tighter supplies as populations build? As populations build, and we just hit upon it with drought, you never know what you're gonna get. So regardless of the type of irrigation that you use, we wanna make sure that you're scheduling that and you're being a smart steward of the resources. So we know our farmers are very smart farmers, right? That was one of the things that Mr. Doherty said is, hey, if a guy buys a valley, that automatically makes him a smart farmer. <laughs> but all kidding aside, you really have to make sure that you're being mindful about that. Because again, it's not just the, the using the resource, but the fact that it is costing money every time you run that machine. So as a result, um, we really want to do that. And again, that's back to the design as well. You know, a lot of guys are probably watching and women as well. We love our female farmers out there. And hey, I already have a valley. I've got the valley unit on my farm already, but they may not be aware of the technology advances that you've been able to make in just the past two to three years, Preston. What's changed? Well, you know, from the road, as you drive by the irrigation machine, it, it might not look by, like much. You know, the machine's always out there. It's always irrigating. It's maybe out there for 10, 20 years, and it's a valley maybe hey, even 30 to 40 years, right? <laughs> but no, in the last two to three years, Valley has really, really been focused on developing and deploying technology to help growers maximize their irrigated land. And we really kind of are doing that by connecting them more with their irrigation machines as well as what's going on in the field as well. And so really, you know, for that, that question of, you know, what's changed the last two to three years, I really say it's been a connectivity. And at the core of that is really our new connected crop management platform, Valley 365. What Valley 365 allows us to do is take our entire suite of irrigation, you know, technology, connected technology products, and bring them into one single platform that's really simple for the, the grower to use, but also it's very scalable for, for the grower to use no matter what size of operation. You know, if they have a few machines or, you know, a couple hundred machines, they could really benefit from that being connected with what's going on on just one field, but also their entire operation. But we're also taking a step further. You know, last two or three years, we developed a lot of exciting new control technology as well to allow growers a more effective way to carry out their irrigation practices. So. This is you know, anywhere from variable rate irrigation to high speed machines doing more uh, with that. And also, uh, again, in the last two to three years, like Darren mentioned, we can't forget about the structure. We're always continuing to, de to deliver that you know, best in class industry leading structure and gearbox out in the field to really give us a solid platform to build this connectivity around and really make it a scalable platform for our, our new technology products. Yeah, you've got a reputation to uphold as the best in the industry. Right. I can imagine you're always pushing for technological advances. Mm -hmm. I actually saw recently uh, Valley Irrigation now has 100,000 connected machines. So that's machines that are actually 
communicating yeah. <laughs> amongst each other and sharing that data. And that can help you overcome variants in a field, for example, or areas where you might need a little bit more irrigation. How does that work? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the 100,000 devices was really a huge milestone for us. Um, we're really excited to see that. And it really kind of shows that we're really truly starting to build that base of connected devices as well as our connected and, and technology ecosystem. We've kind, of, we've kind of assigned a little name to this and we call it the Valley Smart Farm. And it's really a way for us to um, you know, explain this. And it really all kind of starts out in the field. You know, we have our soil moisture probes, our weather data information, all feeding up to the cloud and then ultimately accessible to the grower on the Valley 365 platform that I just mentioned. Now, going the other way with that, once he does have, you know, that, that insightful information there on his phone of what's going on, you know, right there, seeing the soil moisture um, content in the field and irrigation recommendation, but we can go the other way with it and connect back down to the machines, the pump stations to really start that irrigation cycle on, uh, you know, what, what changes really need to be made out there. You know, one thing that's really important to mention is we continue to look at growing this 100,000, you know, which we're really excited about, is a lot of growers out there, you know, the, the structure is something that is there for a while, no matter what brand of, uh, you know, machine you have. And so being able to bring in these competitive machines into the Valley ecosystem is important. So we have a product called the Icon X. It's, it's a part of our, you know, advanced uh, Icon series of control panels. And allows us to put that right on the competitive machine and be able to bring it into that valley ecosystem, have that control, that single platform. So really gone are the days of, you know, geez, I got to go over to this machine. I have to remember the interface looks like that, then go over back to my valley and the interface looks like that. So it really brings it all into one platform and again, back up to the connected, uh, you know, Valley 365 remote telemetry um, product and data stored in the cloud so you don't have to worry about your machinery getting bogged down yeah and if Absolutely. I may and the cool part is every one of our new pivots is coming out ready to go kind of like you know Sirius satellite enabled on a car but as we talked about in mo the massive majority of the cases our existing structure can be upgraded so it's the sort of thing where you don't have to totally start over all right. Wow. Absolutely. I am excited to see some of this technology in motion, which we are going to show you. But as promised, we're going to go to your phone calls. Marvin from Texas, you are our first winner tonight. Thanks for joining the conversation. Go right ahead. Thank you, Christine, for taking my call. My question is, I've seen all the equipment through the years, and my question is, is how deep can one put a well with all the aquifers that around the country. So how far would you have to go to get the gallons per minute to make that piece of equipment work efficiently? Well, it's Marvin, it's going to it's going to be highly variable. So I like to joke, you know, being from central Nebraska, we dug a post hole and pretty much water came out. So we were very blessed up in the central and the Platte River Valley. Um, again, it's that's where your local dealer and your local local well driller can really help you out. Because again, we've got places in Preston, you know, with 300 foot wells. And again, it's just going to be where you can find, uh, as you said, the water quality and, and that availability that's out there. Yeah. So um, it, it really varies field by field. And that's where we just got to get out and do those site surveys. Yeah. And add, to add to that also, the machine size as well is going to play a, a factor in that in terms of what, how much usage you do have to uh, pull out of that well as well. Oh, if I'm Marvin in Texas, what is the best course of action to find out more information about Valley Irrigation? You bet. Um, ValleyIrrigation.com is our website. And I know uh, we've got a lot of great dealers in Texas, especially up on the Panhandle. But ValleyIrrigation.com has our dealer locator and the best place to get that local information that everyone needs. Outstanding. Okay, we're going to go to Pennsylvania. Jen is next. Thanks for joining the conversation. Go right ahead. Jen? Jen, are you with us? Okay. Sounds like we lost Jen, but that's okay. It's live television. It's going to happen <laughs> once in a while. Our conversation is just heating up, and we would love to hear from you tonight. And you might be the winner of a Yeti cooler if we take your call. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. Our number, one more time, 877-731-6733. 6733 More Rural America Live with Valley Irrigation when we come right back.
Welcome back to Rural America Live with Valley Irrigation joining us tonight. As we pointed out before the break, Valley Irrigation has a very special giveaway for RFD TV viewers tonight. All you've got to do is call into the program and ask a question. Six lucky callers will win a prize pack tonight and one grand prize winner will get a Yeti cooler. Call in with your questions, 877-733-6733. And we're going to open up our phone lines right now. Joining us once again, Valley Irrigation Vice President of Water Delivery and Business Development, Darren Seekman, and Associate Product Manager, Preston Parmley. Darren, sustainability, this is a really hot topic in agriculture right now, as you know. Can you talk about how irrigation plays a role in the sustainability equation? Oh, absolutely. Well, water was the original renewable resource, right? And so that's why we, our company was founded on that. When you look at our, our parent company, Valmont Industries, that's our tagline, conserving resources and improving life. So absolutely, everything we do and everything we've designed is that we want to meet the needs of the presence without compromising the ability for future generations to meet their own needs. And that's really, um, and so driven by what our farmers can do. And, you know, again, I grew up in corn country, but I'll use a potato example. And that when you look at the improvement, one acre of potatoes now can feed 388 people. That means your average pivot is feeding 46,000 people wow. for their potato needs for a year. And so that's the kind of, you know, again, that's why we say we want to partner with the growers because the grower needs, I'm only going to put on exactly what the, he needs or she needs, whether that be the water, whether that be the nutrition, whatever the case may be. So that's really the found, again, that's what our company's all about. That's why we're here. You know, I, I think about the implications in developing countries where water is scarce and they need to use it just right. I think about how much we can teach them. I mean, have, obviously you've used this technology in other countries. Talk about some of the reaction that you get. Well, our founder, again, we've talked a lot about our founder tonight, but uh, again, Preston and I's uh, alma mater, the University of Nebraska, the Doherty Water for Food Institute was founded by the, Bob before he passed. And so as a result now, well, over the last 10 years, we have done 77 countries. They have worked in 77 different countries. Wow. So again, on one hand, we always want to make sure that our farmers are, you know, positioned to feed the world. But as we have the pressures of growing uh, population, we know that other places in the world are going to need to do that as well. Absolutely. And you know what? Technology is helping us meet needs. We know that the population is, is growing at a rapid pace for the globe. Technology is helping us to meet some of the demands, though, when it comes to agriculture. Let's talk about how technology is also playing a big role in sustainability when it comes to the pivot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, even though we're uh, an established industry, it's really, I, I really think the future's never really been brighter for Valley, and I think technology is a, a big factor in that. You know, and growers have really been, you know, on kind of the forefront of adopting sustainable technology, adopting technology that's more efficient. Yes. For example, is just the center pivot, you know, b making the, the dry land or the flood irrigation uh, center pivot, making it have a more sustainable irrigation practice uh, out there. You know, and I think a really great um, statistic on that is the University of Nebraska. Um, a study was done in Nebraska in 1990. It was it took 3,800 gallons of water to produce a bushel of corn. Wow. And it was done again 25 years later, I think in 2000 and, yeah, 2014. It only took 2,300 gallons of water to produce um, a bushel of corn. But in the same time, we're losing, using less water we increase our bushels per acre from, look right here, 128 to almost 180 bushels My per goodness. acre. So really, you know, there's a lot of different technologies that went into that, you know, increased sustainability, but irrigation was absolutely one of them. You know, more efficient sprinklers, more efficient pumping units and all that. But as we look to the future and in technology, you know, Valley's really dedicated to, you know, continuing to progress in this trend of, you know, lowering our usage, and increasing our yields at the same time. We're really focused on doing that through, you know, through data, you know, giving the grower more actionable data, more insight on what's going on in this farm, or this field, you know, crop health information. Uh, also, we're doing this through precision, you know, more precision, more precise ways of applying that water. So really, you know, no drop is wasted while you're in that irrigation cycle. Um, you know, 
through these two things, you know, we're really going to push the envelope with technology. But from an organizational standpoint, you know, Valley's very committed. We're very invested into continuing to, you know, produce new innovations as well as this sustainable irrigation technology. And we're always looking out there at the marketplace and, and internally too on, all right, these new innovations, how can we really make these a scalable and simple solution to, you know, continue to push that, uh, that trend of more sustainable water application um, anywhere in the world. Less waste. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. More food, less waste. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones. Ken from Pennsylvania, you are a winner tonight. Thanks for joining us. Go right ahead. Yes, um, I would like to know the difference uh, in the cost of a diesel engine over electric motor. And also, I have water at 100 feet, a lot of water. Uh, can you get a pump to pull up enough of water to irrigate corn that deep? It, how, how deep did you say your well was again? Sorry. 100. 100, 100 feet. Okay, well, uh, to, to the first part of your question, you know, when talking about uh, diesel versus electric driven pumps, it really kind of all depends on market conditions, of course. You know, what is the diesel fuel? Um, and, you know, what is, you know, the, the pump and electricity cost you? But, you know, there's some other exciting technologies that we can do, um, you know, with pumping and being able to integrate VFDs into that pumping station. You know, so I, I think there's a little bit more flexibility with going the, electro the electric route with electric pumps. Um, it, but uh, again, diesel fuel all kind of depends I'd on the market prices. I agree with that, prices. Preston. Uh, especially assuming, Ken, that you can get three phase out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and for those of you that may not know, VFD is a variable frequency drive. And so again, it's a great way to uh, uh, bring that bring that pump on more slowly, get your operating pressure up, be able to vary the operating pressure as it need be. So I think you know most of the pivots now, again, as the evolution, and since I'm the old guy at the table, we've really <laughs> evolved from a lot of power units out there to almost all, uh, uh, probably the the majority now are electric, just because of those costs. So. Um, yeah, that's, I'd probably lean towards electric, just that's yeah, the most absolutely. popular right now anyway. He may be interested in, in finding out more from a dealer in his area as well. So, you bet. Yeah, yep. okay. Yep. Valleyirrigation.com is where you want to go to find out more information. Yep. Maybe let your friends know as well or ask around. That's, that's what farmers I have found always do. They ask questions to their fellow farmers to find out what works best. And mm -hmm. based on the farmers that I've spoken with, they love the pivot. They absolutely love it. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones. Guy from Georgia is next. Guy, thanks for joining the conversation. Go right ahead. Yes, ma'am. My question is, um, we farm, we're in southwest Georgia, so we have a lot of peanuts that we grow, and we also grow corn and cotton here. But I have a uh, three valley systems running off of one well, one 12-inch well, the most water I can get is around 800 gallons per minute. My question is, though, on my corn, we need so much more water than we do on our other crops. And it takes so much time for those systems to make it around to get the water that I need on the corn that, uh, you know, our other crops are slacking in those fields. I didn't know if we could re-nozzle those fields is it cost efficient for us to re-nozzle that pivot where we have the corn uh, and swap them, you know, to each other pivot every other year, or or what 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 would you suggest, guy? I think I think re-nozzling is always a great option for two reasons. First of all, like you said, it can get more water where you need it. Um, that precision piece. The other thing, especially in your part of the country, is um, the equip programs are typically very generous. Um, and so, again, um, in southwest Georgia, you know, I'm probably going to make somebody mad, but, you know, one of our top dealers is Reed Brothers down there, and they, they're probably, you're probably a little bit further south than maybe like Metters Irrigation or somewhere like that, because we've got a lot of really solid dealers in Georgia. So get with that local dealer. But the other thing is, is that your equip money may absolutely pay for that re-nozzling. Wow. See, now now you're really speaking their language. You're talking about equip. Okay. We're going to go back to the southeast. James from Florida joins us now. Thanks for joining us, James. Go right ahead. Oh, thank, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we, we grow peanuts down here in Florida as well. My question is, uh, 
I don't own a valley system uh, yet. Uh, we've got some hard water here in Florida. We've got a lot of minerals. We've got copper, uh, you know, uh, brass, iron, magnesium. How does the valley system and their their actual metallurgy? How, how does that hold up to the hard the hard water we have here in Florida? So, um, you know, James, when we look at, uh, you know, challenging water conditions out there in the marketplace, um, whether it be in your area up or in the northeastern part of the United States, we offer a, a solution called Valley Polyspan. And what this is, it's actually a high density polyethylene where we can line the inside of the pipe as well as the couplers and as well as the sprinkler drops. So effectively, water is never touching a, a piece of galvanized steel. You know, we're at the, the pivot point. We do have stainless offerings as well. But yeah, give your local Valley dealer a call and ask them about Polyspan. I think that would be a really, really good solution for you, um, you know, in having a very long-term pivot uh, to last in your region. All right. The Southeast is enjoying the programming tonight. We're going to go back to Florida this time to talk to Michael. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, Michael. Go right ahead. Okay, having a little bit of a technical difficulty getting Michael on the phone, but that opens up an opportunity for me to ask Preston about how you actually go through the process of developing new technology. What does that look like at Valley? Yeah, so when we're developing new technology, it really all starts with what's going on you know, with our growers. What do our growers need or want to really benefit or enhance their operation? Um, you know, from there, we also you know, always include the Valley dealers into that, that discussion as well, because usually if that grower has the problem, several growers in that region will also have that same problem. So, you know, really, really talking with what's going on in the marketplace and then taking a look at that from a, you know, a sustainability piece on how can we make this, this new complex problem or complex technology, you know, simple, affordable, as well as scalable for any operation of any size. So when we kind of have this worked out, we get to take it back to uh, Valley. We have some really great engineering teams back at Valley and product development teams as well. And we really start to, you know, take this idea and really make it a reality. And then from there, of course, it's always the fun part of trade shows and talking to, uh, you know, <laughs> growers on, on what changes and what benefits we need to continue to make. You know, it's always about continuous improvement for us. So. Even though we'll deliver a product that's not the end product, we're going to continue to develop it, make it more efficient, and make it uh, more sustainable, of course. Um, you know, and on the other side of that, it's kind of the piece I'm involved with, but Darren's also involved with, you know, another side of that, and that's really the acquisition part. You know, networking the industry and finding really good companies to partner Absolutely. with. Absolutely. We do a lot of partnerships and acquisitions as well. Because, again, we know we don't have all the answers. So that's where listening to the dealers is so important. And then finding other people that think like we do and maybe have thought of some things that we haven't thought of. You know what I love is just looking at some of the media releases that come from the Valley Irrigation website. You can see you've been busy, even though COVID-19 has been a factor, the acquisitions continue. And talk about some of the benefit that that offers you as a company. Right. Well, again, we can't think of everything. And so, again, we know farming is so highly individualistic. And so something that works, again, in Nebraska or Georgia may not work in Mississippi. So we'll talk about that in the next segment as well. But finding the thing that always makes an acquisition successful is finding good people and finding the people that come with it. And that's the coolest part is adding people to our team. And we get to talk about that toward the end. We always save the best for last. So I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. we got to talk about labor. Labor is also a big issue, but we're going to go back to the phones first. Warren from Colorado comes up next. Warren, thanks for joining the conversation. Go right ahead. My question is, is I've been concerned about the droplet size on the different sprinklers and uh, the benefits and and uh, the downside to the size of a droplet that comes out of a sprinkler that lands on the crop, that and how do you measure, how does Valley measure uh, the amount of water? I mean, how do they decide, what's the span of the distance that they decide that if you want to put on a half an inch of water, where and how do you measure that distance to get that half inch? Right. So we've so uh, thanks thanks for the question, Warren. Um, 
I'll take the first one in that you're talking about benefits of droplet size, and you're exactly right. We carry, um, there's really three different brands of sprinklers out there. Um, and I, again, I'm not going to pick a favorite tonight because we've worked <laughs> with them all a long time. But uh, to your point, uh, there, is, there is a custom designed application and we have sprinkler charts for that. So we can, we can actually figure out the as applied data a couple of ways. So once we can do even an old fashioned tipping bucket or catch bucket, if you will, then from that point on, um, we can do a flow meter. And then also then just the computational piece as well that's part of Valley 365 so you can really get that as applied data. So a common theme tonight is check with that local dealer again. <laughs> when you get into eastern Colorado, we've got some great dealers there, valleyirrigation.com. And they can set you up and again, sit down with you to really talk about again in that part of the world, you might be raising some, you know, a horse quality alfalfa, things like that. And so that's going to have a little bit different uh, need than say just our normal corn crop. Eastern Colorado, home of one of the worst droughts in the country right now yeah. as well. Yeah. So you talk about some big swings from year to year. They know in Colorado. Okay, we are going to go back to the phones. Michael from Florida, thanks for joining us. Go right ahead. Yes, I was curious to know, what is the average size acreage that the uh, Valley uh, sprinkler system uh, it can be set up to cover? So, uh, Michael, really, it's really all tailored to what your operation looks like. Um, you know, we can make little tiny single span pivots and we can do stuff all the way up to, you know, more than half a mile long. So it all really depends. It's all about how much water and how much pump, how much we can pump out of your water source. Um, but yeah, we're very, very flexible. We have a very diverse product um, offering. And so if you have more specialized stuff, we have things like our corners and benders that can even give you more uh, coverage coverage on your irrigation machines, but you know it really really depends. It's it's. But it probably me. Preston, I think probably the smallest machine that kind of makes economic sense is in that forty to fifty acres. And the yeah. average, you know, the good old seven tire machine that most of us grew up with is covering one hundred and twenty to one hundred and thirty acres, unless you have a corner arm, yep. then it f covers the full quarter section. Yeah. But you know, at forty or fifty acres, because you have a pivot point and you have that um, investment, you get much smaller than that. It gets tough. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Appreciate that call so much. Let's go back to labor because we're talking about how you can actually save money on labor costs as well with pivot irrigation. Talk about how that works, Darren. Well, what we're seeing, Christina, especially even in your home state of California, where pivots usually weren't really something you saw a lot of. Right, right. But we know that there's increasing, you know, not even prior to COVID, right? We've got such a cost, we've got availability. So the ability for that pivot to come and take that whole labor equation out. And we know, again, as long as you do some standard maintenance, that pivot's gonna be out there a long time and you can plan that maintenance out. So then when you're in the hot and heavy of the irrigation season, it's literally pushing a button. Wow. And that's labor savings that, again, at some point, time is money. Yes. And yes, we understand that producers always love to try and you know save that last dollar. But the, the convenience and the ease of getting that water when they need it, that's real savings for them. Yeah, when you talk about long run economic costs as well, when you're able to quantify that and a lot of farmers, they're not in it for the short run, they're in it for the long haul. So that's something right. to consider as well when you're making that investment. Okay, William from Michigan is next. Thanks for joining the conversation. William, go right ahead. Well, hey, thank you for taking my call. Um, no, most of the uh, valley systems that they've talked about so far tonight, I know, are well fed. Um, I'm wondering, say you have a, a river or a large body of water, a lake or something on your property, do they have any systems that could be fed from those as opposed to a well? One of my favorite, uh, thanks for the call, William. Uh, one of my favorite projects that uh, just got done visiting here a couple of weeks ago was uh, we've got 20,000 acres in Arkansas uh, that's being fed out of the Red River. Um, and again, in most places in the world, uh, and especially you get in the Pacific Northwest, uh, we pump a lot out of the Columbia River, for instance, or places where there are um, even places where surface water is collected. So the, the short answer to your question is yes, that means we have some river screens. It means our pumps might be set up a little bit differently. But uh, surface water is actually the most prevalent source of water when you look around the globe. We've just been blessed where pivots started by uh, a lot of things coming out of the well, coming out of wells or groundwater. 
Yeah, if you want to find out more, valleyirrigation.com. They will set you up with a dealer, all the information you need right there. But if you have a question, you might as well make a phone call and at least find out if it's an option for your operation, right? Absolutely. Okay, we're going to go to Sam in Georgia. Thanks for joining us, Sam. Go right ahead. Sam? We have a little rust problem from time to time. And I was wondering about your... Um, Holly line pivot, the um, the popping unit. How how effective is that? How much longer would it last? Oh, uh, we pump out of wells and ponds. Yeah, sure. Great, great question, Sam. Um, you know the the poly span machine. You know, again, effectively nothing on that ear or galvanized pipeline is really touching the water. So I, I hate to say it, but you know, effectively the pipeline should technically last for forever, um, but, you know, being able to, you know, eliminate any of that contact is really where we'll see the, uh, the poly span come into play and the benefits there. Wow, we are getting so many calls tonight. Did you ever think that there were this many questions out there? We're just getting started, too, gentlemen. <laughs> we're going to pause for a quick break, though. That leaves a line open for you. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. We'd love to take your question. We'll have more Rural America Live with Valley Irrigation right after this. Welcome back to Rural America Live. I'm Christina Loren. Tonight, we're joined by Valley Irrigation, and we would love to take your call. The number is 877-731-6733. We're going to go back to the phones in just a moment. But Darren, you've talked about where Valley is going in terms of artificial intelligence. A lot of people are excited about this technology. Tell us about the Valley Insights Project and what you're trying to achieve. Well, this is a great project, Christina, because again, we talked about the fact that while we have a great product development team, we know there's a whole lot of people developing things that we don't even have time to think about. So we have a partner from Israel, of all places, uh, called Prospera Technologies, and they've been able to really do a lot of work already in greenhouses and to capture data that coming right out of the system. So we um, have been flying planes, but more importantly, where we want to get to is the ability to put sensors on that pivot. So you're going to get literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You're going to have eyes into that field. Wow. And that is so very important because there's no other appliance that the farmer has. There's no other implement that the farmer has that will allow them to see into that field every day. And again, in some cases, maybe they will send it over to their agronomist. Sometimes they're going to tell their field scout where to go or their hired man where to go fix a nozzle. But the, but the Prospera partnership is really where we want to take the pivot to because that's how we want to get to autonomous crop management. Wow. Autonomous crop management. Did you ever think such a thing would be in reach? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. But again, we know those growers are going to need to tweak that for their own operations. Right. We want to make sure that the grower has control of what he or she is seeing. But this is, this is something that, again, across our whole corporation, we're making uh, a, quite a large investment in, and we know that this is the future of not just irrigation, but the future of the pivot and the future for agriculture is going. I mean, you mentioned Israel as well. They know how to make water go a long way in that country, and the advances that they have made in agriculture just speaks volume. You, you did go to the best That's... to match this technology that you already have. I'm excited about this. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones. There's other people excited about it as well. Well, Greg from North Carolina is one of them. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Go right ahead. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. I, I am not a farmer, but I have the utmost respect for all the farmers and all the hard work that they do to do the job that they have to do every day and do the irrigation. My big question is, I like technica, technical questions. Uh, going from North Carolina to South Carolina to the beach, I pass a lot of farms that have these valley irrigation systems. And I try to piece a few things together on how it actually works. I know you have a well, and you have, like, your pivot where the arms go back across the field, and you have your extension. I also see the A-frame supports that has the wheels at the bottom. Are they driven by water, or what creates that wheel to turn to help that irrigation boom go across the field? 
Well, uh, uh, great, great question. Uh, you know, but at the beginning, it was water that was making them go around. But however, through you know the evolution of technology and making the irrigation machine move around the field more efficiently, it is actually electricity. Um, it's an electric motor driving a gearbox that is driving the wheel gearbox is really how that machine is getting around the field. So uh, it's, uh, it's come a long way, definitely, but the, it's a very efficient way for it to move around the field. And using that Valley gearbox will keep it going around the field for a long, long time. <laughs> Smart man with an inquisitive mind. We appreciate that, <laughs> Greg. Thank you. Todd from Texas, you are our next caller. Go right ahead, Todd. Hello from a great state of Texas, guys. I uh, had a quick question for you. Uh, what is the steepest grade your system will work on? <laughs> so we get this question a lot, uh, Todd. Um, and it's, a, it's a tough question to uh, answer, but, you know, typically we, we don't want them to go on more than, uh, I, I believe, about 20%. Um, percent. Uh, of, of grade and that's just you know due to our engineers testing and really the safe you know operating envelope of our structures um, have we seen them higher yes um, however you know we, we want to keep it safe we want to keep it within design limitations absolutely but you know typically it's about uh, you know 15 20 percent slope Good question. Got to fight against gravity after all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that leaves the line open for you. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. We appreciate that call. Good question, Todd. We're getting some great questions tonight. Before I forget, I want to make sure that we say hello to all the wonderful dealers out there that do such a great job for Valley Irrigation all across this country. Oh, absolutely, Christine. We are so blessed. We have over 250 dealers in North America alone. And so again, these men and women, you know, they're out there right alongside our growers. And so they're putting in the same hours that growers are, and they really are the backbone. So we can brag all day long about our machine and we can brag all day long about our technology, but without our dealers, we are sunk. They are the ones who make the bridge between the grower and the product. And we really respect the work of the dealer here at RFD TV. So we tip our hats to you. All right, Darren, Valley has been making news on a number of fronts. We talked about this a little bit when we hit on the acquisitions, but you've been seeing success with Prospera, like we talked about, paired with Pivot. I was actually surprised to see the acquisition of Precision King in Mississippi. Talk about that. Well, that's right back. Now we're all of a sudden we're stuck on dealers, Christina. <laughs> so that's that's a case of our territory manager out there with Mr. Corey Rowe at Chico Irrigation. And Corey said, these guys have a good product. It's designed for the Mississippi Delta. And as much as we want to put pivots on every acre of land everywhere, we know that's not necessarily the case. So we got to meet up with the Precision King people. Um, they've got some really nice products around flood um, and around some of, they had a little bit of overlap with what we did, but it's really uh, getting us into the, the rice the production. Yes, there's a little bit of rice grown under pivots, but it's traditionally more of a flood, you know, you flood the whole field for weed control. Um, but last but not least, it's about people. And so Nick and Daniel there have been a great addition to our team. And uh, we're now excited to take some of their things that they've been working in that, you know, Arkansas, Mississippi region, taking them to California, to Texas, and maybe even overseas as well. But we, again, we take the water management piece of our business very seriously. And again, if we're going to conserve resources, we want to do that across all forms of irrigation. And that's a lot of our technology products as well. The same with the Prospera product. Yes, it's designed for pivots today, but we absolutely know we can take that into flood and drip in the future. Oh, water is the building block of life. It is so important. Preston, along those lines, is there anywhere around the country where you might be surprised to find a pivot? You know, it, uh, it, it's, it's yes and no. It's all about going back and, you know, doing more with less and pulling more profitability out of that field. And so, you know, I would say I wouldn't be surprised to see a pivot anywhere in the United States because, you know, we really have a diverse uh, product portfolio and they can really pull from that product portfolio to be able to tailor that machine to that specific field to really, you know, give us the best return, make us a really efficient operation and, and so on. And the same goes with technology, absolutely, because it's really, you know, again, we have this great suite of technology products it's just we're just pulling from different options on what best suits that that operation, no matter where they're at. You know, if it's in the desert 
or you know somewhere up way up in the northeast. It, it really is the same essentially, but uh, you know we're just pulling from those uh, different product offerings and tailored to each specific farm. Yes, oh, yes, I absolutely. Love that. Okay, we're gonna go to our final call tonight. Joe from Missouri, you are the winner of a Yeti cooler. Thanks for joining us. Go right ahead. Yeah, this is Joe. Hey, uh, I'm. My question is. I'm wondering about what they've done to alleviate the problem of people stealing wire off of pivots. We uh, we had wire that was stripped off by the, by some people one time. Thieves stole the wire, and we put it back on, and they took it again. And so we went to uh, we went to hydraulic drive pivots, and they worked okay for us. They worked great. But I was just curious what what y'all figured out to do about the. Uh, wire on on center pivots yeah yeah sure uh, and well joe i guess congratulations on the yeti cooler right <laughs> first off but um also you know this is a problem we've seen you know around america and as well as around the world and we have a couple different options um a couple are, are more mechanical protection of covering the wire but i'd say the most popular one and the most cost effective solution is utilizing some of our remote technology it actually allows us to monitor, you know, that wire, making sure that connection is continuous. And if that connection is broken, i.e. somebody's trying to steal that cable on that machine, it alerts you. And that way you can call the authorities or, or run out there and scare them off. So we have a couple different options, but of course, the, it's a great feature to bring into our remote technology products. Uh, but yeah, give your local Valley dealer a call and he'll be able to tell you about our uh, cable theft monitoring systems. Wow, thank you so much for that call. Next level farming is something that's pretty exciting. What do you want our viewers to know about that? Uh, next level farming for us then is like you said, we, we talked about autonomous pivots. We've talked about connected crop management and that's absolutely where we want to go to. And what we mean by that is that again, out of the box, any, you know, for all of our new pivots or if you rec uh, upgrade one of your panels, you now can start variable rate. And that's not just water, but that's now nutrition. That's the ability to do you know, fungicides and other crop protection type tools. So again, we really wanna think about breaking that down. The way I've talked about it, maybe for our listeners that haven't been around pivots, is this thing isn't a giant lawn sprinkler. Think about it like if you've ever seen an inkjet printer work. And so now we're thinking about literally drop by drop across the field, applying exactly what the crop needs when it needs it, I love that. where it needs it. That is so smart. I, and I love the fact that you are able to do that with the technology that you have. I want to remind everybody, Next Level Farming premieres at 9 p.m. Eastern time right here on RFD TV as well. If you want to find out more information, that's our sponsor. All right, we are going to talk about what we want our growers to leave with tonight. What do you want them to take away? Say somebody is on the fence. I love the pivot but I'm just not quite ready to make that investment. What would you say to them? Well, I'd say, you know, stop by your local Valley dealer and do the math. <laughs> um, because again, it, you know, I can, we can talk all day long. You can come to a farm show, hopefully someday soon again, we'll all One get day. together and come to farm shows, but you know, do the math. And again, it's, it's probably going to be that, that cheapest insurance policy that you can think of. And the cost savings, along with the, you know, the ability that you now are going to have, uh, you know, worry-free nights, not worrying about whether that rain's coming or not. And again, you're getting the water when you need it, where you need it. I love it. And if you don't want to be the one to do the math, just go to the website, find a dealer. They will do the math for you. Valleyirrigation.com is the website to visit. I want to thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you both. What a great show, very insightful, and in really putting us in a good position as we start to think about those input costs going into the next growing season. Thank you so much for joining us here on RFD-TV. Good night from Rural America's Most Important Network.